Hey guys, it's Drew the Kush Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we'll be talking about six coins that we're sending into CAC. Are they right for the grade? Are they not right for the grade? We're gonna give our opinion just so we can uh, learn a little bit when they come back. And uh, yeah, just bettering our numismatic eye and show you a few things that we sold, but let's get this video started. Before we show you guys those coins, I wanted to show you a few things that we sold uh, from last video and over the weekend. Just wanted to show you guys a little bit of where the market is. People are spending money from anywhere between $50 to $1,000 all the time on our website, AcousticCollectibles.com. Well, I'll look at have Casey Pan down here just to show you a few orders that we are sending out tomorrow. A few high dollar stuff here like we talked about last video, the 36 Block 8. That one sold. So did the Proof Trade Dollar. They just go quick. Super cool coins, especially because one's hard to find in CAC and one's hard to find especially in that cheap of condition. You know, that's probably the cheapest proof trade dollar that you can find out there in the market. Uh, nice little 50 proof quarter, CAC approved gold dollar with gorgeous color that we talked about. Two sample slabs. So when you're at um, a show and you go kind of to like the cheap part of someone's table, sometimes they have sample slabs and sample slabs have really been picking up in the market recently. So when you can you know, jump in and test the waters on some cheaper stuff like a sample slab. Um, you'll end up seeing a lot of dividends, especially when you put them on eBay. I think we have $30 into this set of two uh, New Jersey state quarters that are sample slabs and they ended up selling for like 85 bucks on eBay. Just a really quick 40 bucks after everything's said and done. So definitely watch out for those when you're at the show. Got a key date 14D here, nothing special, average grade. 67 Buffalo that we made ourselves, pulled that out of an album. And then we have just a variety of other stuff, original seated half and a kind of a high grade Lincoln and just a bunch of other, you know, knickknacks here and there. But uh, definitely, like I said, a mixed bag of what's been selling here recently. But let's move into the coins to show you a few things, uh, why we think coins will cack, why they won't cack and things you can look out for when you're trying to send some stuff in. And is it going to waste your time or is it going to add value to your coin? Let's show you those. So just to reiterate a few things about CAC, what is it kind of used for? Especially, you know, there's coins and holders. Now there's coins with stickers and people are like, it's a scam. And people are, are like, it doesn't really have any value in the market. Once again, the market speaks for itself. People are paying more for CAC sticker coins. And the reason being is because they're more sure about the grade. There's someone that's an independent from the third party graders that really wants to create value in the marketplace by telling you what's good for the grade, what is overgraded, what is exceeding the grade, a whole bunch of stuff that they end up just offering as a service with CAC. And so I wanna show you this coin real quick that we've been holding onto recently. This is an 1803 Drake Bust Half. Really gorgeous XF40 condition. Bought this coin at a show. I mean, everything that you want more for an XF40 it has great detail, or nice originality, still a little bit of remaining luster of the coin. And I mean, I just couldn't pass up this piece no matter how much he was asking. We ended up getting it for a good price, but when someone sees this coin, they're gonna understand what it is. They're gonna understand that John loves this coin as well. And his name carries a lot, especially in this market and we're, when we're going and where we're going with cat grading. And so without further ado, Let's show you guys some coins and let's give you our opinion if they will cack or not. All right, so here are the six coins that we want to talk to you about today. Give you my opinion, provided close-ups and why I think they would or wouldn't cack. But let's start off with this Spanish Trail from 1935. It's a commemorative half, nice looking coin. Off the bat, you can see it's off-white, which means it's not 100% white. It's got some haziness to it. And whenever you pick up a coin like this, you want to lean it forward. When you lean it forward, you can almost see kind of the background or what's hanging out on the coin that you really don't want. And so when I take a look at this coin, you can see these smudges right underneath the United and right underneath the dot behind States. It's got some smudginess to it, something of a film that makes this coin unattractive, especially when CAC gets it in hand. Most of the time when I see that smudginess on a coin, I would say it's no because they just don't like the appearance of it. Maybe it was from an old dip, or it could be signs of early PVC. Nothing on the reverse that I can see from here, but I would definitely hold this one back based on that smudginess in the fields. 
I do see that a lot. So, and I do see a lot of coins like that not passing. Let's talk about this 99.0 Morgan dollar. Definitely a tough coin for color. Has a nice blue, red, and orange to it. As you know, with New Orleans Mint Morgan dollars, the strike is weak and it's gonna be all the way through the hair there. Very flat. It has some nice remaining luster on the obverse, especially for a 62. There's a lot of rub on the face, right underneath the eye, going down through the cheek. But it is a 62, I think it's graded accurately. There is a, kind of a black spot on, uh, on the breast feathers there. I do think this one has a 50-50 shot of getting a CAC sticker just because I feel it's accurately graded as a 62. Sometimes I get coins that are 63 plus that look exactly like this. I know from the get-go it won't pass. So this one does have a good shot. Let's just hope they think the color is genuine. Sometimes PCGS and CAC don't agree on whether a coin is uh, you know, authentic in its color or questionable in its color. This is a 1926. Two and a half dollar Indian. There's a few things that jump out at me of this coin. They call it a gem, but there's a giant scratch from the ear all the way to the back of the head. It's very hard to see, but you can see the coin read coming all the way across the coin. Uh, let me know if you could pick up on it, comment on there. But that, that scratch really does, for me, hold the coin back. You can kind of see another big scratch right above the feathers here are the back, kind of back wings, back feathers. Just a really choppy coin. And the thing about these holders is that they're either undergraded or they're overgraded. They didn't know how to grade Indians back then and they're getting a little bit better at it now. So definitely something to watch out for. Sometimes you might be buying an overgraded or an undergraded Indian in a Rattler or an OGH. Next coin I wanna to talk to you about is this California. This is a 1925S. It's got a nice kind of rim tone to it. It was probably held in some cardboard or, or something of the sorts. You always see the rim start to fill in first. And the, the whitest area is going to be on the high points, which is where he's prospecting. And on the polar bear right on the shoulder. Sometimes when you see that whiteness, it's almost like, uh, you know, they might attribute that to a weaker strike, a flatter strike. And that's where a lot of the coins don't go from, say, 64 to 67. Most of the time, there's just softness here or a lot of rub right on the shoulder and on the back. But I do like the color of the coin. I do think there is weakness on the polar bear. Um, as the, for the luster, I think it's mostly there. I would think this coin has a shot at seeing. I don't see any big, huge scratches or issues in the fields to where I would hold it back. And so I would give this one a 50-50 and I would give the two and a half a definite no in my opinion. Let's move on to the 1875 seated half. So, a few things to note about this coin. The first thing you can pick up on is the color on the rim. I'm not a fan of the color because most of the time when it's artificial or it's induced at a rapid rate, you can see the blue and red be a color that runs together. There's no color progression in the coin. That's just something that is very surface level and nothing that you should really worry about with this piece, but that's something that, I don't know, for me, starts to give off red flags. Well, there's another thing that's tough with this coin is the hairlines that are in the right side of the field. It's very hard to pick up on, but it's almost like a scrubbing motion. And you can see if, if it's very faint. Just look at these fields right here. It's very faint, but there's lines going like this and lines going like that all the way down the right side of the coin. This coin has definitely been brushed in the past, in my opinion. I don't think it's hairlines from the minting process, but rather someone that was trying to buff out that field and make it look like it was in a higher grade. Another thing I don't like about this coin is the softness of the detail. Most of the time when the strike is a little bit weaker, there's gonna be a softness in these knees and on the breasts. And this one definitely has that softness. It could have had that either from the strike or someone could have buffed it out just like they buffed out the field on the right side. I do think this coin has been slightly cleaned and they did let it through luster on the reverse is nice i do like the reverse a lot nothing to write home about in terms of issues but i do think this coin would never see a c the last coin i want to talk to you about is the coin that we picked up recently at the beaumont show 
Overall, the surfaces are original. Nothing that I could find out of the ordinary that would bring this coin down. Uh, there's a few hits that kind of bother me. So when you take a look in, you know, right on the cap, there's a huge hit between the Y and almost the back of the head there. And there's a few that are on the face. But overall, very wholesome, original Carson City. There is a bit of a softness on the shield on the reverse. It's almost missing detail there. But I, it was hard for me to find a lot of great CEC examples to choose from and to compare to. So we're just going to send this one. I believe it has a great shot. And I want to let you want you guys to let me know what you think of each one of these coins down below because your opinion matters. And it ultimately will help you learn in the long run. But we hope you guys enjoy this six coin lineup that we're sending to CEC. So taking a second look at this 1875, I finally figured out the reason why I think this coin just shouldn't have passed to begin with. I think that it was dipped and a little bit over dipped to where it stripped the devices. Right on the top here, it's like really dark on the arm, really dark on the, you know, on the breasts and really dark on the legs. And when you start to spin it, it almost as a cartwheel, it's almost broken luster. It's not 100% full. You can almost see darkness in these two fields here. When you start to do a cartwheel, for me, it just feels like it's not natural. And when you look at the, you know, the reverse, there's almost these like dark, little shades of darkness all around the fields here as well. I don't know. To me, it feels over dipped. Something happened to this coin. And like I said, I don't think CAC is going to like it. We want to thank you guys really quickly for watching this video until the end. What have you guys have been selling recently in, you know, your area? Has it been higher end coins? lower end coins, uh, CAC approved coins. We would love to hear that down below. Also comment on the coins that we talked about today. Do you agree? Do you disagree? What have you been seeing with CAC as well? Make sure to like, make sure to subscribe. We're coming out with videos every single week and we want you guys to be a part of what we're doing here at Acusha Collectibles. But we will see you guys in the next video.